What's up, everyone? Welcome back to episode 94 of the Average Aussies Premier League podcast. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, don't forget to give us a like, give us a follow, hit us with a five-star rating. It massively helps us out. Check us out on Instagram, TikTok. If you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification button. Let's get into it. Edu Gaspar is leaving Arsenal. So, he was our technical director who then got promoted to our sporting director i think that's the step that you take going up the rungs um but apparently yeah he's told the club that he's leaving um going over yeah so he's going to the maranakis or maracas maranakis uh group who own nottingham forest olympiacos and there's another smaller brazilian team or something like that yeah but i've been told he's going there on a bigger role so he's triple the money Something like that. Reports say triple. I, I know it will be. He'll be heavily compensated. Money um, talks. Yep. Ah, uh, yes and no. So I think Edu, as long as I've kn- we've known him at Arsenal, has you know gone through the ranks. Like he's a he's a career progression kind of guy. Yep. A bit like myself. You you know he doesn't want to stay in the one swap for too long. So, I mean, at first I was like dodgy. Like something's gone on. Not dodgy, but like something's gone on here. Something's happened between him and Arteta. But then I think about it. Apparently, there was a report that came out by, I forget what media was, it's one of them really renowned ones in France, yep. come out in August saying that um, this guy was trying to poach him because he's eventually going to be CEO of these clubs or because it's a multi-club. Of the group. Yeah, it's a there. multi-club system. So, it's already bigger, more not bigger, but more international, more... Yeah, similar to probably, like the city group. Yeah, yeah, probably more responsibility and then obviously with an angle of going into CEO. So, that makes sense from a that standpoint it still is a bit strange to me that mm, like 10 games in the season he's like oh yeah by the way i'm fucking out of here and i'm going now yeah Mm. there's a lot of talk you know you know like arsenal he has lost power in his role at arsenal because Mikel has obviously grown in power yeah now i've seen a lot of things saying um you know this is bullshit like arteta's just getting rid of people that he doesn't want to challenge him and stuff like that like Talks about him holding the club to ransom before he signed his new deal. If he didn't get the players that he wanted, he was leaving. Um, it's it's well documented that like Calafiori and Mikel Mourinho were players that Arteta 100% wanted. Yep. But I still don't think that he would have gotten them if like he didn't have the backing of Edu and stuff like that. I, just, yeah. I think the whole idea that Arteta doesn't want anyone to challenge him is kind of bullshit because we see that he enjoys that. They have a great off-field relationship they have a great working relationship by like everything that you see everything that edu's done for the club like it's been him and Mikel like going back and forth i mean maybe he has lost a bit of sway and Mikel is arguably getting bigger he is now moving into arsene wenger territory where uh-huh. he's like a manager of the entire football club um but yeah i just don't think it's as like um i don't know what the word is but you know, backstabby is what everyone thinks it is. Sort of. Yeah, I think he's just moving on because he's been given an opportunity that they've obviously asked him to go now. I mean, who knows? What do I know? I'm a fucking average Aussie sitting behind a desk in a small town in Sydney. I don't know fucking shit, but you could it's always, come. It's always good to speculate. I love, love a bit of speculative, yeah. you know? Yeah, spe- <laughs> speculate to accumulate. Yeah, yeah so um, you never know. Like something could come out in the future, but at the moment, I don't see it. We do need to replace him, I think. I think there's no doubt about the fact that we must replace our sporting director whether Mikel wants to have enough pull to decide transfers and shit like that because I mean we've seen in the Arsene Wenger era it works to an extent until it doesn't work and yep. then and arguably these signings that he made recently like Calafiori I think is a great signing um, Mikel Mourinho an okay signing so far I mean a lot of people are saying the same thing hasn't had time to adapt but I'll get into that later but I just think that's kind of and I've heard it like reported like spoken about elsewhere it's, a, it's not a balanced signing like I feel like we're too we have no replacement for Martin Erdegaard at the moment which is what leads me to our next point uh, Newcastle 1 Arsenal 0 um, thank God Schmidt had Melbourne Cup today because he was touted to be on this podcast but mm. um, obviously it's the biggest uh, day of his career um, not because he loves a punt because of who he works for but um, yeah, so he's not here, but he was giving it to me at the wedding. Somehow, he managed to get reception. I know you had it too, but 
he's fucking into me already. There was an ambulance at that wedding and I did tell him that I'm not afraid to fill it up. So... Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, they got room. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Smitty, you can get a ride back real quick if you want. Nah, nah, it was all in good fun. But um, yeah, anyway, I guess we. Well, I'll start with the game because there's a lot that comes after it that we probably need to talk about. Well, I need to talk about. And I don't know who wants to listen, but um, yeah, I'm going to talk about it anyway. So, um, as I said, Newcastle won, Arsenal nil. We started pretty well. Um, obviously, 12 minutes in, you get an absolute pearl of a cross. Ooh an absolute pearler of a fucking header. I've heard people say that um, our defenders should have done better. I think when someone kind of just peels off a back shoulder, it leaves Saliba in a situation where the cross is that good. He's like, I'm not going to get there. Um, oh, I've felt it. He's caught yeah. He's caught in no man's land. It, yeah. like, in, not in terms of bad positioning. No. It's, it's just... He can't affect he, that. He can't yeah. move as quick as the ball he's no put himself way, in a good right. position yeah. it's just the cross is too the good ball's better. the cross and is too the cross good. is great and the move, I, f- I feel like the move, I, people are saying the movement's not much for me Zach but he, he kind of goes in with Gabriel and then peels off the back of him he's in the perfect position it shows why he's highly looked out by other clubs like yeah. he can score good goals like and that and to he, be fair he is a good player yeah 100% and and Gordon they've switched him over to the right there like he's usually a left sided player, and they switch him to the right. I don't know if they've seen something that they thought, um, and we'll get to that too because obviously our back line again. But I mean, that's a I forget who it was that said it, but that's a nineties cross. I think yeah, it was, that was Yeah, have you seen it? Yeah. Um, him and Wrighty sitting in the, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, back yeah. in the green room, yeah, and he was in there because Wrighty's always oh. getting up for goals, and it was, yeah. it was uh, old uh, yep. Shearer's turn. But he did, and he makes a great point. You very rarely see a ball go out to the wing these days, and first that's, time whipped. That, to me, that's yeah. a David Beckham cross. Hundred yeah. percent, yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it was, it was, it was lovely. I just, it, I just don't like Gordon. <laughs> no. Whipped and I was going to say, I was going to whip. Pace. Yeah. like Isak, great movement and everything. Didn't have to do much. Just had to nah, put a head on it. Had yeah. to just just hit it, meet it nicely. And yeah. that's the thing; it kind of goes not directly at Dave Ray, but it only goes like ah, a though. foot to the, the right. But it's going that quick that he's got no chance. Because that's what you like when you get the ball whipped in with such pace. To all you got to do is just just glance it, just yeah. guide it, you know. And you got to think like the ball, a ball whipped in that well. And it's a it's a lost art. It really is it, because yeah, absolutely you've seen what it like. You know, we talk about through balls that take plays out of a game. That cross took. Um, Gabriel out of the game because it's over his head. It took William Saliba out of the game because it was too fast and whipped too hard for him to do anything. And it took David Raya out of the game because Raya can't come for that because there's no chance he ever gets no. there. Probably looks more stupid if he goes for it. Yeah. So it's just with that one cross, it's pretty much removed three defenders out of a fucking out of a situation, and it's Isaac just got to hit it on target. That's it. Yeah, and that's a goal. So. I, I must say, like commendable goal, like it was really good. But I just—I thought think, you guys were a little bit on top though before that. Yeah, oh, we started really well. That's yeah. what I said. Like I think we started really well. after that. I don't know what happened, man. I honestly don't. Um, I think I need to. I speak about it often, but I don't understand Trossard playing where he does. Now I don't feel like Trossard gets enough stick as what he deserves, and I don't like coming for players. But playing in the middle of the park. I, you see consistently he's too slow on the ball. He gets caught out. He thinks he has way more time than he actually does. He doesn't actually affect the play. He make there was one pass there for Saka. He just had to slide it in and he hit, hits it out for a goal kick. And I'm just like, honestly, man, like how the fuck are you playing that position? Like, I don't know where it comes down to the fact that like you say Trossard goes into that kind of you know second striker number ten spot. He's not a second striker and he's not a number ten. He's a winger. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have the quality or the finesse to hit those, he's a those, winger, those bro. type of balls. And he's not even a winger so. that you start every week in, week out. Like maybe at Brighton, yes. But yeah. he has too many, for me, like don't get me wrong, I love Trossard and I think he, what he's brought to the club for what we pay for him has been, he's, you know, doubled down on what they paid for him. But I just don't think that he's that guy. He's not that guy. Can't hold that standard no. for 90 minutes. And, and like, I don't want to say just chuck in Ethan and Ari at 17, 18 years old. But you've got to do something there. like play, At least play him more. And I'm, I'm more of the elk. So people are saying don't, you can't throw him in the deep end. You can't start him straight away. I'm more in the elk of throw him in straight off the bat. See how he can affect the game. Let him get time to get into a game. If it's not working, 50 minutes, bring him off. That's fine. Yep. Then put your trossards on where arguably trossard will flourish better because players are more tired or you know he's on the ball more and he can affect yep. the game better. Yeah, he's definitely better as an impact player. We've seen Nuneri 
affect games and obviously it's too much to ask a kid and this is what I mean like if you start Winery it's much different than it on, on the 50th 60th minute putting him You're in there and being like to do yeah something. go in and affect the game it's like Phew, all right that's a lot of pressure for a young kid yeah especially when you don't have the likes of Martin Erdegaard and then as I was going to say before we're unbalanced now we've got Mikel Mourinho and Declan Rice and we've got fucking Thomas Party playing right back now Arteta's saying it's because Ben White's injured but Play Durian Timber on that side. Mm. Durian Timber's argue a better right back than he is a better left back. Now, is that because he doesn't trust Zinchenko? Is it because he doesn't trust Miles Lewis Skelly? Is it because he doesn't trust Jay Kiwiol? We've seen him have reasons not to trust them, but Newcastle aren't that good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they're, like they're a good too, side. Too respectful of them, eh? Yes, they're a Gunnison side. Jonathan James. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah. And they're a side that. Arteta said it two years ago, two seasons ago. You can't compete with them physically, especially at St James's Park, because they will just batter you off the ball. And they do. They slow the game down. They roughhouse it a bit. They get the calls because they're at home, and that's fine. Yeah. Like it's how it works. It's how, it's how it works at most of those boisterous stadiums. Liverpool's the same. Yeah. But I just think that when you go to St James's Park and you've put Mar- Mourinho, you've got Declan Rice in the midfield, you've got Thomas Party at right back, like. Are you just trying to bust them open? Like, are you trying to go man for man and compete? No. Like, and yeah. we, and the fact we don't have an answer for Martin Erdegaard. Like, well, to be fair, like, th- like, there's not many answers for him. He's, no, he's that fucking good. Yeah. I agree with that 100%, percent Jango. There's nothing like close. Yeah. That, when that, air, that's the issue. When, air, the when air is the next, yeah. Like, he's Erdegaard's replacement. We let Emil Smith Rowe go yep. in the summer. We let Fabio Vieira go in the summer. Now, I'm not going to say that those players would have won us that game. Not, it's not what I'm saying at all. But they're players that have played in the Premier League, that have experience in that role, that can do something. And you want to talk about not chucking a kid in the deep end, then why not keep one of them on? I mean, mm. I just think that our, our reliance on Martin Erdegaard and even the lack of intensity in that game, I think he's down to Martin Erdegaard not being there. I know we've had a fucking tough run. We have like Bournemouth, we've lost. We played you guys, we yep. drew. Um, we had a tough... Um, Champions League fixture and now we come up against Newcastle away we are going through it at the moment and I'm not shying away from that fact and I'm not trying to blame it on one thing I just feel like our reliance on Martin Erdegaard at the moment to get players up and get them going and just our lack of creativity like there was if Bukayo Sack is not on that field who was triple teamed most of the game but still manages to produce our best chance with yeah. Declan Rice should score which he misses in the dying minutes of the game it's like that's our answer. Hail Mary for Declan Rice. Push him forward. And I'm like, right. We're like, yeah. if that's where we are now, like... That's McTominay territory, mate. A Chucking little bit. Like, don't get me wrong. Declan and... All right, I keep jumping from point to point. But now I've heard people coming for Declan Rice. I've seen some... I've seen multiple posts the other day saying, oh, you know... And it's funny. Everyone's quiet when we're, we're smashing the league last year. No one says a word. Like, Declan Rice, great signing, 100 mil, good. Now you're getting old, 100 mil. You wasted 100 mil on Declan Rice. He's the most average fucking English midfielder going around. Moses Caicedo scores a volley on the weekend and you've got these Chelsea blokes being like, oh, Moses Caicedo is far better than fucking oh, Declan Rice. He's he, only, he only scores bangers. Yeah, his <laughs> ceiling's so much higher. And it's like, man, like, we're going for a trot. Like, you weren't saying shit like... 12 months ago and it's just that's just football though I understand that but yeah. even Arsenal fans coming for Declan Rice like the man's a workhorse he's a machine if he's not in that team then see what happens to us like please do me a fucking favour but it's like you sit there right and you take any of those fucking teams throughout the world any of the big teams and they lose their key player mm. see how they perform like I reckon you, you can only choose like a, a couple of teams that that have that backing well, who was it come out and said, um, it was one of the fucking dumbass pundits come out and said, you know, Manchester City do it. They've got injuries and they're still performing. I'm like, bro, have you seen who they replaced their fucking injuries with? Yeah, I know. You've got Rod- Kovacic for Rodri and you've got Bernardo Silva, fucking whoever you want to chuck in there. Anyone can play Kevin De Bruyne's role because they, mate, Gvardi Ol could play Kevin De Bruyne's role. Yeah, he'd probably do yeah, And he'd probably better. do a better job <laughs> if he's yeah. that fucking good. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you can't tell me, oh, Manchester City. Anything that starts with Manchester City have injuries is fucking null and void because yeah. we've said it a thousand times on this podcast. They have three world-class squads in their fucking Mate, they remind me midst. of the old um, uh, Real Madrid teams. Like there was that, um, I think it was the 80s or the, or the early 90s or something like that. 
they literally played their own fucking B team in one of the Spanish Cups. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> that's city. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I just, as I said, I think Erdegaard missing is, our reliance on him is scary to me at the moment with him out. Like we've been, even we lost at Bournemouth before we went down to 10 men, we weren't that good. Liverpool, we started firing on all cylinders yep. for the first half. We weren't that good the second half. Now we've got a massive fixture against fucking Inter Milan tomorrow, I think. At the San Siro? Yes. <laughs> away from home. And then we come back to play Chelsea <laughs> at Stamford Bridge, I'm pretty sure. Mate, uh, you, you get no fucking, what is it? No respite for the wicket, eh? No, that's, and like, it's just... What, Odegaard's Odegaard won't be December back. December or something? He won't be back till, 100% won't be back till after the international break, which is after this round. There's um, another one? Yes, there yeah. is. Um, but I just... I know. Ethan told me today. <laughs> I just think, I obviously, I haven't touched heaps on the game because I just, I don't feel it's important to go through each moment in the game. Like, obviously, Mourinho probably could have scored... Um, there was a moment probably for Gabriel Martinelli. And there's chances that we da- aren't taking as well. So I just think at the moment, I've said all my piece now and where I think we're lacking. I want to add to that that I think we have had a super tough start to the season. Whether people want to say we have or we haven't, it's Premier League, you, there is tough starts for everyone. Yes and no. Um, we've played three. We've only played three of the bottom 10 teams in the league so far. Um, seven of them... Um, and of the seven they've played in the top 10, only two of them, those games are at home. So we've played majority of the top teams away from home and no, none of the bottom teams. So plus you add on to that, we've played PSG, we've played, we're about to play Inter Milan, like we've played some massive sides in the Champions League as well. Um, we've played Atalanta, who we've got to draw with. Like, yeah. you know, we've got injuries. Califiori, I didn't even mention Califiori. He's, he's only been there for 10 weeks, but God... You can already see the impact that he's making in the team. Like having him out is a massive thing. Like being able to have him on the left, Julian Timber on the right, vice versa, swap him in, swap him out. Ben White coming off the bench, Ben White starting. Makes a massive difference to how you build up play and how you can move and progress the ball through the middle of the park. Do you think yeah. that you want someone to stand up though without Odegaard there? Do you think it's time someone stands up or are you... I do, but I don't know who it is, yeah. man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Bukayo Saka has been yeah. and he will. He still does when Erdegaard's in the team. Like, and for anyone to say that, you know, Erdegaard, got, I mean, Saka got played out of the game by Lewis Hall. Go back and watch the fucking game. He wasn't playing against Lewis Hall. Joel Linton was literally there every time Saka got the ball. Mm. That was Joel Linton's job was to get over and help him. And when he wasn't there, you get... He, sometimes you get three of them. You get Bruno in there, you get Lewis Hall and you get... Joel Linton all trying to fucking stop him as I said he still produced our biggest chance of the game yeah. so he can't do it alone Gabriel Martinelli needs to really sharpen yeah, his pencil say, he does yeah, really sharpen his pencil because he's if one side's getting tripled then it should be a little well, less on the other side and, and he should be able to we've, like we've got players like I know he's a Chelsea reject but Sterling off the bench Premier League experience has flair has attack can go forward Obviously, Arteta doesn't trust him to do the job that he done. Like, why the fuck did you bring him in if yeah. you didn't trust him? Like, you can't base your judgment on what you've seen of him five years ago at Chelsea. I mean, at City. Like, if you don't trust him to bring him in in games like that, why did we fucking bring him in at all? Um, you know, you put Jorginho in there. I argue. I would argue that Jorginho probably should have started that game because he's got more going forward at the moment. Right? Mourinho's not up to speed. He's nowhere near up to speed of the game. He looks like he will get there. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but at the moment he just does. We just lack that dynamism in midfield and, to and really that, that start. Might, that might take half a season. For it him. will, man. Yeah. Like, and I think playing him next to Declan Rice, it's like they're arguably similar players. You know what I mean? That's why I'm saying the balance is off. That it's not that you can really distinguish the difference from one to the other. It's like no, you got two poor, like um, tall, like powerful. Yeah, like, could and, he and could Tom he drop midfielders? Have it in for where Trossard was and put. Do you I have don't anyone know. I don't. I don't feel like no, not really, because if it's not, it's Jesus who can't fucking hit a barnyard door, and then you got Trossard who isn't a striker. He just gets bullied off the ball, especially against Newcastle. Like Newcastle being shit. Like their back line, To be fair, their fullbacks were really good on the weekend. Like yep. Lewis Hall did well. Um, fuck, who's the on the other side? Uh, he was Burn? no, nah, Dan Burn. Sure. Sure. Whatever. Now nah, that's their um, centre backs. Um, it's not Livermento, is it? No, nah, he. Is it? Yeah. 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 He was the other one that was good. Um, Burn and Char have actually been out of form and they were covered well by their fullbacks in that yeah. game, which is what you rarely see. 
Um, yeah, normally it's the other way around. But yeah, it? it's just like, and you got players like Gabriel Jesus who's throw him up there, like you know, do something, like really push the game forward. Like, I'll I'll finish on this point. I know I've fucking rambled on for about <laughs> half an hour. Yeah, I'm sorry for anyone that doesn't interest, isn't interested in Arsenal, but I think the one thing I want to say is. If you look at how we were playing two seasons ago, I don't know if you remember, Jacob, but like everyone was, yeah, yeah. everyone was kind of it was swashbuckle football. It was fucking fast. It was go forwards, banging goals, getting goals scored against it. So it was just chaos. And everyone was like, "It's too emotional. You can't win a league like that. You can't, you know, you can't play like that week in, week out. We expect to win a league. We come second. We were, we were going for it. Then we seen last season. We pulled it back. We reined it in. We played." more controlling football. You know, mm. we dominate possession. If we lose a player or we go down, we sit in tight and, you know, it's almost like we've become too much of like a, I don't know, pragmatic side as in, I don't know why Arteta's had tried to rein them in so hard. Why do we not go back to the, tap into that emotion that was getting us where we were getting in the first thing and learn to use that because at the moment, like, yeah, if you can harness it. It's kind of like we're in this weird phase of like, we don't know whether to play. We don't know whether to sit. We're kind of a bit timid. Like players aren't brave enough. Like Erdegaard's not there. It's like, oh, fuck, you know, do we play that ball through? Like I can't give that ball to him. Like, yeah, I just think like if we can kind of strike a balance between playing that full on hectic, like chaotic football that we're playing that was just bang goals and people wanted to watch us. Like yeah, people were excited to watch Arsenal yeah. when... We took on City two years ago now. When no one expected us to, and out of nowhere, bang, we're flying. We'll play like beat you. You think of it right. You, you're uh, you don't support fucking Arsenal or City or something like that. But if you know there's going to be goals in a game, you watch it. Hundred percent. But I just think it's fine in that balance. And like, obviously, we've got some injuries, as I said. And I'm I'm a silver lining guy. So I've had a fucking tough run. It will come. This is this has to be like our usual December to. January run though usually yeah. over Christmas we get a bit wobbly it's out of our system now like if we're any chance of the league like I think we've got two game. if we lose one more game I reckon it could be good night for our Premier League hopes because you guys are fucking flying yeah, um, City seven points clear now everyone knows what City do like they chug Chelsea aren't that bad so right, and Tottenham are only two points behind you exactly right they're, they're, they're in the hunt I still I think Tottenham are too inconsistent but that I could come back to fucking that could come back to bite me. I just think that like we don't have much to play with now. Like we've unless you know we see you guys lose a few games, City lose a few games, even or Chelsea which, lose a few which, games, which certainly could happen. Can happen, but I don't want to bank on that happening. Yeah, that's like, right. I yeah, want yeah. from now. Like if we don't have a big performance against Chelsea and we go in the international break with a draw or a loss, yeah, it could be like Good bye bye. Yeah, thanks for coming. So. Big questions asked. It's probably the first time I've been tested on this podcast. My metal has been tested on how I feel about the team because I've been just metal. absolutely in love for the last two seasons. But, you know, this is why we love football. We're into it. <laughs> um, fucking on to the next one. It.